Hello and welcome. My name is Torbjörn Nordling and I'm an assistant professor in automatic control at the Department of Mechanical Engineering at the National Shengong University in Tainan. I'm also the general chair of this workshop. Welcome. Now, behind me I have a symbol of NCKU, the banyan tree planted by Crown Prince Hirohito of Japan in 1923. Now it's my pleasure to introduce to you our honorary chair, executive vice president, chair professor Wu. It is a pleasure to welcome all of you on behalf of the National Chengkang University in Taiwan. I'm proud that our team, the NCKU Parkinson's disease quantifiers, are one of the finalists in the OpenCV AI competition. They are also arranging this workshop. Now let us all learn computer vision and AI using the OP camera together. It's my honor to introduce Professor Shi Wei Liao from the National Taiwan University. Professor Liao obtained his bachelor's degree from the National Taiwan University, his master's degree and PhD degree from Stanford University in the US. After working for more than 20 years in Silicon Valley for Stanford University, Intel and Google, he is now since a few years back back in Taiwan. His career in Silicon Valley culminated with him receiving Google's highest award, the Founders Award. Professor Liao will be presenting recent work on certificate-less aggregate signature for multi-level blockchain. This is something that is needed in Spatial AI to secure the data already at the source in the camera by adding it to a blockchain so that it can't be tampered with. So please help me welcome him. Okay, good day. Yeah, uh, thanks for attending this talk. Uh, the title of the talk is the Certificate Aggregate Signature for IoT Blockchain. Uh, this is Steve Liao uh, from the BDS Consensus Lab at National Taiwan University. Here you can see the contact information. Uh, you, you can always write email to Liao at csie.ntu.edu.tw. And the first, uh, let's go through six brief slides about uh, about myself because uh, now everything's online. I find it helpful to have uh, six warm-up slides with lots of pictures so that uh, the audience and the speaker can warm up to each other easier. Okay, so uh, first, I just want to uh, reiterate what the Deloitte say about ABCD. APCD stands for AI Blockchain Cloud and the Big Data. And uh, uh, I basically have been working in Silicon Valley for 22 years. And then uh, after receiving the Founders Award from Google, I went back to Stanford to teach uh, the, the program optimizations. And then I joined NTU uh, for for uh, for the past few years to work on ABCD, and then we always love international collaboration. Uh, and uh, and uh, here um, before COVID nineteen, I go back to regularly. Um, I go back to Stanford regularly, and uh, and also uh, here is uh, my advisor at Stanford. And uh, he looks, she looks much younger than I am. So uh, we here in Taiwan, we are overworked, and uh, we are surrounded by many students uh, in 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 Taiwan. And the uh, and then we try to uh, attend like the blockchain center meetings regularly. 
uh, and uh, and uh, we like like I said, we were overworked. Like uh, this picture is was taken at three a.m., uh, but we usually don't go uh, that late, um, except for paper before paper deadlines. Uh, and we also attend this uh, uh, fintech Taipei every year. Uh, a lot of people came, and this gentleman is from DBS Bank, uh, and we have this. Uh, uh, Bitcoin tracing software, and uh, then uh, we can also uh, see that uh, uh, details from the YouTube. Okay, here comes the last slide about myself, and then we have a regulatory technology and the fintech technology. Okay, the fin uh, physical web with blockchain. Uh, here is the uh, video. Uh, you can always uh, watch later. Uh, this is on YouTube, and that's from the the TED talk I gave uh, in 2017. Let's um, let's uh, call POTT blockchain. Uh, POTT stands for Production Logistics Tracking and the Tracing, and so uh, we we try to make sure the problem itself. Um, uh, that satisfy these three criteria. Uh, the first one is the problem uh, needs to ask for the for a highly available and replicated directory service. And so for for this full safety IoT blockchain, this satisfy this uh, criteria. The second criteria is uh, the OD trail is needed in in your problem domain. And for for this case, because we are talking about Food, traf food safety and uh, pollution, and so the the auditability is important. And the last criteria is uh, uh, like this problem uh, ask for compliance. And so 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 like by deploying IoT blockchain, we can uh, rely on lots of uh, uh, devices and uh, and uh, and the nodes. Like uh, you can be a node you. On a blockchain network yourself, and then then we can try to provide tracking and the tracing capability. Uh, so here is uh, example. Uh, ever since like uh, four years ago, uh, almost four years ago, uh, we have launched this uh, production logistics and the tracking blockchain. This one is without tracing. So so by using the tool uh, in Chinese is called Zhen Shi Chen Xian. Uh, you can like use this app and the uh, and upload the the the, the, the data uh, to the blockchain. And, and the next slide is on uh, uh, just uh, in addition to tracking, we also have tracing. So you can see a particular uh, product comes from uh, its source. Like there's there are like A B C and uh, in the in the, in the, in the in this allow you to go beyond just tracking locations, but you can also trace back to where it comes from. And so uh, we don't have uh, uh, marketing. It's basically, we use word of mouth, just like the uh, internet world in the beginning. Um, and uh, after a few years, uh, we, we can see that uh, many products uh, are already um, like volunteered uh, to the to the blockchain. So those uh, history of products and the, the, the process in making uh, they are those information are uh, like day by day uploaded on the blockchain and the, and the, uh, so you can check the, the temperature and the, and the humidity and so on the IoT information and you can um, check the the, the, the the image from your IP cam. Okay, so uh, like this data is uh, real. So you can see the daily active user and uh, uh, mon monthly active usage as well. And, uh, and uh, so it's because it's uh, a bottom up and uh, uh, it's more sustainable. And sometimes during uh, Chinese New Year, of course, few people bother recording the, 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 the POTT, the production and the logistics uh, stuff. And after the, the, the holiday, the long holiday, sometimes there's a big spike uh, to compensate the, the data um, not being recorded 
during the, the, the Chinese New Year holidays. Um, and, and uh, here is the number for monthly active users. And I took this data end of last year. Uh, and uh, since the, the TED Talk almost four years ago, um, we have over a million transactions regularly. And we, we don't uh, do publicity. Uh, we don't buy AIDS campaign, basically. And, and we rely on words of mouth. I remember uh, when I work at Google, uh, the founder of Google say, a good product sells for itself. And, uh, and I think right now it's not Yahoo moment yet, okay? Uh, because uh, the, 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 the volume and the number of users are not in billions, but, but we understand uh, the trust takes time and the cost. So the so blockchain is about internet of value. It, this needs trust. It's different from like the internet of information. Okay, because the blockchain uh, involves value, it may take longer time uh, to uh, to succeed. And the, the internet, um, uh, how, on the other hand, is a good indicator, like whether this is uh, um, being used uh, and being checked upon regularly. That's that's good, and then we can also take look at the interesting characteristics how how long is your supply chain and so on and and what's the the change but in interest of time we we will quickly um recap on this part uh basically uh like i say uh in the past like about 1500 days uh things are picking up um in terms of speed, but, but I don't think it's a Yahoo moment yet. And, but, but we can see in general, people are interested in PLTD tracing. Uh, like when you, when, when you want to buy a particular set of drinks, uh, you, you, you may be interested to, uh, in, in knowing that uh, the, 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 the manufacturing process is very environmental friendly. Even the dye comes from plants. The, the, the plants it's not chemical stuff and so so those uh, those two parts those two things are different um, basically different different chain uh, in terms of checking and tracing uh, and, the, and the, these two different chains are cross checking with each other it's uh, good to audit this uh, so to recap why IoT blockchain? Uh, we want to help blockchain to be more useful in like uh, the safety I just mentioned, or agriculture. We want to improve transparency and uh, make it traceable and uh, improve food safety. And so there are a lot of smallholders in the farming industry, and we, we want to help them um, to be able to like uh, prove uh, the, the, they are con conscientious uh, farmers, and this can help them get uh, financing from the bank. And, the, and the, we, we also know uh, that public infrastructure is quite expensive uh, for, for in the IoT world, because here you have uh, tons of sensors. And the one way uh, proposed by Shamir in 1984 is to use key generation center. Uh, this avoids certificate management cost, but it has its own problem. So, so we want to use uh, like um, class uh, certificate as aggregate signature instead of uh, just uh, ID based system. You know, and we'll, we'll we'll talk about the the bandwidth and the computation time savings later on. In the interest of time, we'll, we'll go faster, mm -hmm. and the people can always revisit the this set of slides in their uh, spare time. Okay, in, in our system, we have a three layer blockchain system. And then we have a, um, like a framework for supply chain management. And then, like I said, we deploy this uh, certificate, this aggregate signature. So, so, so here, uh, for example, we have uh, Ethereum and the, the aggreg aggregator node uh, and, and the IoT devices. And then we have uh, more details in the upcoming slides. Uh, so let's recap on the advantage of class uh, CLAS. Um, first, uh, we are talking about tons of IoT devices, and those devices 
uh, are rich in members, but uh, limited in capability. And the aggregate signature uh, allow you to like, uh, uh, to, 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 to basically aggregate multiple signatures onto a short aggregate signature. Um, I already talked about the, the disadvantage of traditional public infrastructure and the, and the, and the, the advantage of this uh, ID-based signature scheme. Uh, so the, the advantage of classes, uh, we try to inherit the respective advantages of traditional PKI system and this ID-based cryptography system. Okay, so uh, uh, the, to recap our contribution, uh, we are the first to, like, in real world, implement this class for IoT blockchain scenarios. Uh, the second contribution is uh, like the number of pairing computations and the Haitian computations were reduced by us. And the last one is uh, to show that our our class scheme has better efficiency in computational cost when compared to previous common class schemes. Uh, so here we will talk about some related work and uh, um, and also some background information. Uh, so so for in the interest of time, uh, we'll go faster for the background information part. Uh, people probably are very much aware of uh, this Ethereum the smart contract. Uh, Ethereum is an open source public public blockchain structure. Uh, in the in the uh, the each full node in the Ethereum network can execute this smart contract. That's a piece of code that runs on top of blockchain to facilitate execute and enforce an agreement between untrusted parties. So, uh, like I said, the, we'll skip the background parts in the interest of time. Uh, the readers are invited to go into details. Uh, at their leisure time, okay. Uh, the bilinear mapping they they, they made uh, they help make aggregate signature natural. Okay, so uh, we already talk about public key infrastructure and the uh, ID based system, uh, and then now uh, we'll delve into the details of our system architecture. Mm -hmm. uh, the layer one is the Ethereum public chain, and the layer two is the quorum. Um, the smallholder node and the aggregator node. Uh, and the layer three is this uh, IoT devices. And uh, so, mm -hmm. so the IoT devices don't go directly into public chain because Ethereum public chain uh, is expensive in terms of gas fee. And here is the component of our class system. Uh, you have aggregator node and the key generator center and the IoT devices. Uh, so, um, like in, in terms of uh, uh, the 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 key generation center, it, it, it will do this. Uh, uh, it will take care of this part of uh, your key. It's called DI, but but you also. I have, I can generate a random number called TI. So your key consists of two parts. So your destiny or your fortune, your fortune is not entirely controlled by this key generator center. Okay, the, in traditional ID based system, KGC wields tons of power because it, it knows everyone's key. Um, so 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 uh, the class try to. Um, alleviate their problem. Okay, in the coming few slides, uh, I'll use C to represent the class. Okay, so so here is uh, uh, explanation of uh, the aggregator node. For example, in, in your food factory, um, in this food factory, you, you typically, uh, for example, in Shinbei city, uh, then the, 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 the the largest um, food manufacturing site may have an aggregator node, and the, the IoT sensors uh, located within that manufacturing or food production site will will send information to this aggregate node, and the, and the, and then aggregate node can go on to uh, to the to the layer two. It's part of the layer two. Uh, 
okay, this is uh, details people can uh, visit later. Uh, we can deal with this uh, um, uh, different like uh, individual signature and the verification for sure. But we want to improve the efficiency by doing things in an aggregated way. Uh, this is what this slide was uh, explaining. In terms of performance evaluation, uh, like we have uh, uh, three categories of uh, um, potentially time-consuming uh, operations. Uh, pairing uh, is one of them. The second one is scalar multiplication. Typically, scalar multiplication is uh, less expensive. The pairing can be more expensive. And the hashing is the last category of operations. Uh, we, we, at the end, we, we try to uh, make sure we do constant pairing. So um, uh, the number of uh, pairing operations is two. And uh, the number of uh, scalar multiplication operations and uh, N stands for number of messages. And the, the, the number of uh, hash operation is two times N. Okay, so so we, the, compared with the other work, we can be faster. And then in terms of performance, uh, then we, we, we can have a, a faster um, that computation. Uh, in the in the the, the, the the scheme our scheme is lower uh, regardless of uh, the number of messages if there are 80 messages then we aggregate signature for 80 messages uh, at the time uh, our, our, our computation cost is uh, smaller than that 50 milliseconds uh, so uh, in summary uh, we propose a novel a certificate is aggregate signature scheme with constant pairing computation for IoT blockchain, uh, the Internet of Things blockchain. And it's free from private key escrow problem, such as uh, those in the PKI domain. And uh, we, by, 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 by not using PKI, uh, we, we no longer need to have uh, this public key certificate management burden, and we have we have done performance evaluation to show uh, our system can be quite efficient. Uh, the, we do constant pairing, and the uh, the number of uh, uh, scalar multiplication and the, the number of hashing are both linear to the number of uh, messages. And finally, uh, we use multi-layer blockchain system because if we just use one layer public chain system like in, in Ethereum, uh, you have you do have uh, a decentralization and a security in that case, uh, as shown in this uh, blockchain triangle here. But as you all know, the Ethereum blockchain is not so scalable. Um, that like every, every, the, the transaction per second is limited to like 15 or 20. Uh, however, uh, Ethereum 2 um, is trying to increase the scalability, but it's a long time, it's a, it's a long, long journey and still, uh, the journey is still carry on. And on the other hand, if you just do this uh, uh, Alliance blockchain, for the layer two, uh, there you have a scalability and a security, but you may not have a, a worldwide consensus like a Ethereum blockchain does. So you lack decentralization. By deploying multi-layer blockchain, we try to get the best of both worlds. Uh, but however, uh, this is a impossible triangle uh, because of this cap theorem by Eric Brewer uh, from Berkeley. Uh, he used to work at Google as well. Um, how, I mean, the key thing is uh, uh, the cap theorem shows you cannot have all three at the same time. That means uh, you cannot have a system that, both, that, that has a security scalability and decentralization in the same time. So, so I'd like to make it clear that our system uh, doesn't invalidate 
uh, the the CAF theorem. We are just saying uh, we we can try to asymptotically achieve uh, decentralization and scalability and security. Like especially when the layer two right back to the layer one. At that moment, uh, we 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 try to uh, have more uh, worldwide consensus. Uh, we try to uh, attain a certain level of decentralization. And the uh, the next uh, few slides are on the details. We call it appendix. That we this shows our uh, supply chain management framework in in, in our uh, like smart contract because we work with the local bank and we try to help the the small holder, the young farmers or uh, the not so um, rich farmers uh, to be loan applicants to this bank, and by by recording the uh, production history um, in that small holders from uh, farmland and this can uh, help the, the the applicants receive uh, uh, receive a loan from the bank because all the uh, sensing information are recorded on blockchain and the bank can evaluate um, the, the the data on blockchain the determine if if this particular smallholder is is a uh, um, hardworking like farmer or not, and the, and the, there's also the agri agricultural financial institution involved. Like I said, uh, this uh, aggregator bank bank in, in Taiwan, and the, the the distribution channel is also important because. We are talking about the supply chain here. So you have uh, upstream and the downstream. And so the, the operational procedure uh, is, is quite formalized and, uh, and, and uh, we can track this uh, process and in the, in the, in the, in the, in the, then that you should along accordingly. Uh, so thank you for your time. And uh, uh, now um, we are open for questions. Thanks. Okay, Professor Liu. Um, so we will move on to the online session in a couple of Uh, so we are in online session now. Very welcome, Professor Liao, and thank you very much for joining us the Q and session. So now we are um gathering the question from YouTube and Twitch. So um, for the audience, please feel free to ask question. Let's wait for them a couple seconds, and we can start it. Okay, so I got a question here from the chat. The first one is, um, it was interesting to learn about network you have online with over a million transaction. How many companies are participating? Uh, thanks. Uh, so, so uh, the question, if I understand correctly, is about um, like a, who are the stakeholders? Uh, how many participating companies are there? Uh, sorry, Professor Liao is since they're echoing there. Oh, okay. Should I turn off? Uh, oh, should I turn off YouTube? Yeah, I think that would be good. Yeah, okay. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, not not much better. Yes, yes. Okay. <laughs> no, no. Yeah, because I, I, uh, I, I, I basically uh, participated in both ways, uh, YouTube and uh, Google Meet. Okay. No, no, no. This is much better. Uh, so, uh, so, 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 right. Uh, um, in the. Uh, in, basically, for uh, for the food safety 
uh, blockchain uh, stuff. Um, basically, it's with the uh, the 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 uh, with this a agricultural bank, uh, and the uh, and the and the, the the funding came from National Development Council in Taiwan. Uh, so so uh, the 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 checkpoints from the the government is like uh, um, how many uh, farmers uh, receive loan through uh, supply chain blockchain. And so, 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 uh, as a result, basically, we 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 just uh, like uh, uh, try to uh, basically make all this uh, production history uh, as available as much as as possible in the in the then uh, the short answer is uh, uh, I think at least National Development Council in the in the in the in the. Uh, and and the agricultural bank and the final thing is uh, um, uh, there's uh, this this uh, um, this uh, basically agricultural center under um, basically under the the the, the government uh, uh, so they help us a lot as well um, so that that's that's agricultural center um, is is actually is near Taiwan University <laughs> and. Um, so, so that's the, uh, they, they, that's basically, you know, in Taiwan, many government agencies have actually uh, 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 multiple centers under them, and this is one of them. And, and so, so the, the business logic comes from them because they understand much better about the domain knowledge. Uh, in this area, like the the the, the food food tracking and so on, yeah. So uh, they, that's that's what I have now. Yeah. Uh -huh. Thank you very yes. much. Uh, next question is: I did not quite understand the part about how the multi-layer chain work. Could you please explain it more? Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, um, basically, uh, like, uh, like that, there are uh, many these uh, many uh, IoT devices, and uh, they 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 shouldn't talk directly to Ethereum. Otherwise, the system will be overwhelmed. And so, uh, uh, as a result, uh, what we like to do is uh, uh, like structure things hierarchically uh, the, the the sensors talk to uh, aggregator node and the aggreg aggregator node itself is interesting because uh, it's both aggregating the information uh, from uh, various IOT devices uh, but also aggregator node itself is a, uh, is a is a is a node for uh, it's a participating node for layer two blockchain. So, 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 so you, you understand Web three um, those, those uh, uh, API uh, and the and the uh, for for example, uh, let me simplify things to make things clearer. Uh, for example, if you have uh, say uh, one million transactions or uh, like one million records um like you want to um to 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 cross check uh for uploading to blockchain and the, and so this one million transactions say happen within today okay so every day you have a uh, one million uh transactions this simplify things um uh, and so uh to make the points we we, we simplify things as follows uh, so you, you can have a 20 layer tree um, because if we have a 20 deep Merkle tree um, at the leaf layer uh, you can have uh, more than a million transactions you know because two to the power of 20 is more than a million so 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 supposedly every day you produce a Merkle tree for today July twenty seventh, and uh, and then this uh, this Merkle tree, uh, if you change any part of the the tree, I, I mean the 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 leaf layer, and the the Merkle rule will be different. 
So that's that's an important trick because uh, you, you just need to record the 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 the, the Merkle root. Basically, that's the root of this Merkle tree onto the the the, the public chain onto the the layer, layer one chain. In, in the multi layer architecture, uh, lower layer like level layer one. You can have layer one, layer two, layer three, and so on. And the layer one is uh, uh, more expensive and uh, and uh, less scalable uh, because it's public chain. It's uh, it has global consensus and it's expensive. Um, so you don't want to overwhelm the layer one blockchain with one million transactions per day. Uh, instead, you want to just um, summarize it via the the Merkle tree. Uh, structure and uh, you only need to upload one 32 bit data uh, onto the, the, the layer one blockchain per day. That's the Merkle root. And so uh, the transaction fee become affordable. Uh, otherwise, imagine you, you upload one million transactions to Ethereum blockchain per day, they, they will be very expensive. And, uh, and uh, it's uh, each time uh, you can prove uh, because you, you just need to present uh, the, the particular um, like transaction on layer two. For example, uh, transaction X say it's in dispute and you just need to present the proof as follows. Uh, you, you present this transaction X, that, that, that's when node in the leaf layer right and then say say from that leaf node all the way going up all the way to the Merkle root that's a most that because it's uh 21 actually i should say um uh, it's now 20 layer um uh, Merkle tree it should be 21 layer Merkle tree because for 21 deep Merkle tree you will have um, more than a million transactions uh, on the leaf layer because two to the power of 20 is uh, over a million, right? So so uh, you just need to traverse from this particular leaf node on the leaf layer, traverse from the leaf up and up and up all the way, uh, you traverse 20 times, you reach the, the uh, you reach the root, right? So the proof is as follows, the, the leaf node itself and the, and the, the opposing path uh, all the way up because uh, you, you know you just you, you just think uh, on, on a twenty uh, on, on a twenty one layer Merkle tree uh, how like uh, you 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 have million transactions and then you have a log a million um, uh, path length from the leaf to the root right so that that that's log of a million is about 20, 21, right? So it's a, that 21. So, so, so you just need to prove uh, from this, uh, uh, this leaf node, and then the next level up, what's the opposing node? And then next level up, what's the next opposing node? Because, because uh, you, you know how Merkle tree got constructed. You, 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 you basically um, do this, uh, two by two, two by two. This is a binary tree, right? Uh, and then you two by two, you, you do a, uh, you, you do a, a hashing function of, of this uh, left and the right branch of a particular binary branch, right? So, 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 so basically uh, for particular, any particular binary branch, you can always find the opposing parts. If you are from the left side, then the right side is your 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 opposing path, right? So 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 your proof is basically what I'm saying is the the proof size is manageable because uh, given a million transactions, you you only need to have a log and as as your proof size if, if it's a if 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 it's, it's if n is a million then log n is about 21 so it's affordable it's a log of 2 n right so 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 this way uh any lt record if any lt record is in dispute uh you can use the the Merkle root on the public blockchain because their public blockchain their ethereum blockchain uh 
on, on that blockchain network, Ethereum blockchain network, you have uh, over 10,000 miners there. And, uh, and uh, all these 10,000 miners uh, will, will, will prove this this blockchain is pretty much immutable because you, you it's the huge uh, proof of power, uh, sorry, proof of work involved there. And you cannot alter any record easily on the Ethereum public blockchain. So you can see there's a trade-off between uh, between the, the 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 gas fee, the the transaction the transaction fee involved, and the and the, the trade off for a small space, and the, and the how how you want to um, keep all the IoT records uh, as much as possible. But this should be done on lower layer, not the layer one. Okay, the layer one should be reserved for committing whenever the the Merkle tree is full. And then you you move on to the next Merkle rule, Merkle tree. And then hopes in the in my example, every day you, you just need to um to 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 uh, produce a, a, a new twenty one deep uh, Merkle tree and uh, and then the, the costs become affordable. So 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 that's how multi-layer blockchain works. Yeah, thanks. Thank you very much for your great and detailed explanation. The next question is, um, you mentioned that the key consists of two parts, one from the central key server and and one random part. How generate the random part and how does it affect further processing of the data like uh, data like verification? Uh, the the data. Uh, 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 sorry, I I I I only catch the 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 first part. The second part, you say it's the uh, uh, the data. Sorry, the second part. Okay. Could you? Yeah, let me try to say it again. So you mentioned that the key consists of two parts: one from central key server, and one random part. Yeah. Then how how generate the random part, and how does it affect for the processing of the data like verification? Oh, okay. Aggregation. Okay. So, um, uh, uh, so so, um. Uh, so the the second uh, uh, be, be, because uh, uh, basically uh, e both Ethereum and the uh, Bitcoin blockchain, for example, both both of them are using this particular type of PKC uh, public key cryptography. Uh, so PKC or public key cryptography in uh, in 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 the in the traditional blockchain world is simple because uh, uh, because uh, because 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 people just come up with their own uh, private key, right? So they can use random number and so on. And from the private key, they can produce the public key, and then from the public key, they produce the address. This. This scheme is all right because, um, like uh, in the Bitcoin blockchain or Ethereum blockchain, they they, they want to remain anonymous uh, in, in, in some way. Some some people call this pseudo anonymous. Uh, and anyway, the the the, the transaction uh, data itself um, doesn't need to be like uh, uh, kept private, but but the address. Uh, who is the identity behind this address is kept secret to some degree. Okay, but but, but some some researchers in Germany claim that they can track like thirty to forty percent of all the addresses uh, on, on, on the blockchain. But but nevertheless, uh, the 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 initial goal is is uh, of this uh, uh, traditional blockchain design is to uh, to to keep some to to make it some anonymous to some degree so they can design the the public key cryptography in their way they can do this uh, random number for public key uh, uh, they don't need to i mean the hard they kind of avoid the the hard part the hard part is uh, uh, like a, for for a particular iot device uh, or particular address uh, who is uh, who is that address? Which IoT device is that address corresponding to? So, so for example, uh, like 
each IoT device, say for example the 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 thermometer and so on, that has a MAC address. And the, is the MAC address unique? Uh, it's not one hundred percent absolutely unique, but to some degree, uh, you can assume practically it's uh, it's unique. So we we want to use this uh, uh, MAC address as the ID because uh, uh, they, they they kind of uh, uh, separating paths from the from this uh, Bitcoin uh, money laundering. <laughs> I mean, I'm just uh, pushing things to some extreme to make things clearer. Uh, so you have one camp who is, uh, we want to be anonymous, we want to do money laundering. But on the other hand, we, 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 if we want to uh, make blockchain practical, we definitely need to deal with these identity problems. Uh, for they, that's the problem we are facing with the IoT blockchain. So, so we we use this MAC address as ID, and then then because we are ton, there are tons of uh, IoT devices. PKI won't work in our case. We cannot resort to public key infrastructure. Uh, th th those certificates will be too expensive because we are talking about tons of IoT devices, and the in the so ID based. Uh, system, the IBS, uh, based on MAC address is attractive, except that the KGC is a single point of failure. The key generation center is dangerous. Uh, so we, we, we have to uh, come up a, 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 a trade-off. You know, computer system is all about trade-off. So our, our design is uh, uh, this, uh, just like uh, other class systems, the certificate is ab ab aggregate signature system. We, we, we basically, um, uh, we have to to use uh, DI, quote-unquote D DI, from the key generation center. But but if we, uh, so, so they, they solve a lot of problems because we, we, we don't need to deal with PKI. But on the other hand, the, the key generation center holds too much power. Um, it's, uh, it, it, it's basically, it, it knows everyone's private key if we don't introduce TI. So, so that's why we have to have two parts the TI part and the DI part. The TI part is just like the, the you can just uh, think of it as uh, um, traditional um, Ethereum blockchains, uh, PKC, the public key cryptography. They, they, that's just similar way of, uh, of doing that. And the, our main focus is how to make this system uh, efficient because uh, there have been a lot of uh, class. So not, none of this is new, basically. The IDE-based system is from Shamir, you know the Shamir in RSA. The Shamir came up with this idea in 1984. So, so we were talking about a 37 year old idea. And uh, and uh, if we look at the class, it's also like uh, in the past decade there are, there have been tons of work on this as well. So we 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 basically we our contribution in my view is uh, well we, we we come up with the efficient class. We we don't claim we 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 have any breakthrough in in cryptography or class or IBS, but we we, we 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 I think our contribution is we we are practical people, we are practical Taiwanese, and we we have a problem in hand to solve, and we have to um, basically make good trade off by coming up with the efficient cons. Uh, efficient class system with constant pairing at the same time um, uh, we marry this uh, IoT blockchain with this uh, class idea I think it's a very good match in, in our case because uh, traditional uh, class people the certificate it's uh, account aggregate signature people they, they 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 don't work on the blockchain area most of them and the and the for IoT blockchain well I'm not talking about uh, Ethereum blockchain no traditional like uh, uh, money laundering <laughs> parts no those don't need us either but 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 if you are talking about uh, real application in real world, the IoT blockchain, and I, I found it to be a good match between class and the and the IoT blockchain. And I think that's 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 where our contribution comes in. Yeah, uh, thanks. Yeah, thank you. I'm trying to pick some question from Twitch also. So for audience who not follow the technique part that well, 
could you please, oh, sorry, could you please specify what is the practical use of the system you develop for customer? Thank you. Uh, yes, yes. Okay. So, so, so for example, uh, if you have, uh, uh, there's uh, many scenarios you can think of. Um, for, for example, uh, uh, in, in the future, uh, like, uh, I mean, even today, there are more IoT devices than the population in the world today. And, uh, and uh, according to the Microsoft study uh, in 2025, the, the, uh, by 2025, there'll be an explosion of uh, IoT devices. Just in this room around me, there are like, uh, uh, like dozens, more than dozens of IoT devices. And in, in, uh, uh, in, in, if, for example, uh, if if we uh, need to deploy all these AIoT devices, and uh, if uh, one scenario is uh, if if it malfunction, uh, or if there's a zero day attack, or whenever you need to do a firmware up upgrade to to this uh, say one me uh, like say one hundred thousand devices. IoT devices, and uh, and uh, you you need to uh, like uh, sign these uh, one hundred thousand transactions because uh, each 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 firmware upgrade, say you are facing faced with zero day attack, you you want to quickly update these uh, um, hundred thousand devices right away, and uh, and uh, do you want to overwhelm your blockchain with million? Um, like signatures, uh, and the, and the, and the, they can be overwhelming. And the, and the, and the, as you know, blockchain um, has uh, blockchain comes with cost. Blockchain is more expensive than database because it's trustable. You try to uh, try to make things immutable. As a result, there's a cost and a slowness involved you, like, uh, like i said the, the 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 ethereum blockchain can only accommodate like uh, um 10 to 15 transaction per second in the in the in the when, when you need to deal with million transactions uh, you cannot handle this in in the in the traditional way and so so by using by linear mapping by by our aggregate signature uh we can prove that you sign this uh this one one time uh is equally safe as uh you signed million times uh so 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 you reduce the the signature cost uh because when when you are faced with a lot of nature uh, scenarios are very bursty. Uh, you just found the malware, just someone is attacking and so on. And on these IoT devices, you need to quickly um, uh, upgrade them to the next page. And uh, these million transactions can be handled uh, reasonably well using two things, uh, multi-layer blockchain design and the second, a solution we, we we come up with is this uh, aggregate signature uh, stuff, and then then the last part is this certificate is parts. Uh, uh, when you say certificate is, that's typically um, going against like uh, um, uh, 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 PKI. <laughs> Basically, in in Taiwan, uh, with like 23 million people here, um, like uh, say maybe uh, half of them have. Uh, 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 like a uh, uh, pu 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 public key uh, infrastructure uh, uh, certificates, so on, and in the, the but IoT, uh, it doesn't work that way. We 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 cannot uh, we cannot design a PKI system for all the IoT devices for for each Mac address. Uh, do 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 we really want to give them? Uh, a, 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 a PKI a solution for them that I don't think it's feasible. So, so, so when we move things, when we want to make real blockchain applications, uh, we definitely need to deal with identity. And so far, uh, money laundering kind of applications for blockchain, you don't want the identity because those people don't want to be tracked. But when you are talking about uh, real application, then 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 we we our solution I think will be very useful. Yeah, thanks. 
Thank you very much, Professor Liu. So this is the, I think it's the time for end this QA session. Thank you very much for joining us. Tomorrow, um, we will, we'll, um, this video will be online on YouTube. And also tomorrow morning, 10 a.m. Taipei time, we'll have another session. We'll have another presentation. And also for Hackathon, it will be on Friday, 1 p.m. And welcome everyone to join us. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Thank Liao. You. Thank you. See uh, you. Thanks. See you. Thank you. See you. Yeah.